Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 224, 32 Apps on a Flip Phone. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, as always, without his beard, Mr. Dave Baylor. Yeah, did, can everybody see my nice, <laughs> yes. clean-shaven face over radio? Yeah. Uh, that reminds me, I know I've mentioned it before, but I've been told I have a great face for radio. <laughs> yes. I'm not quite sure what that meant. <laughs> I would agree. We are recording remotely once again uh, due to the stay-at-home, be-safe uh, whatever the term du jour is uh, on the West Coast here, but we're playing it safe, recording remotely. But we still got, there's actually some tech news this week, like normal oh, really? tech news. Yes. Hmm. Uh, so we'll get into that. But I've got some follow up. We were talking about a bunch of free links, and we've also mentioned Affinity's suite of products, which kind of competes with Adobe Photoshop and all of that right. stuff. And they are now offering 90-day trials for all their products and 50% off their uh, applications, their computer applications. So, Hold up. Yeah. How Don't they distribute their products through the Mac App Store? I don't think they did trials. Do they also uh, sell them through their website? Yes, they do. So, yes, you can uh, do the 90-day free trial through their website. You enter in your information. Uh, but if you're looking for something, that's a great way to be able to do some uh, great creative projects on your computer. Uh, also, Audible, they're offering a bunch of stuff as long as schools are closed. Uh, you can go to stories.audible.com. We'll have all the links in the show notes. And one that I don't know if we've talked about before, there's a service called Canopy, uh, which is, goes through your library card or your university card, and you mm -hmm. get access to a bunch of streaming content through there, much like uh, Libby or uh, the other one for books and audiobooks through your library. Canopy does video stuff. Very cool. And one um, more. I was going to say, I'm at the start reading our show notes before <laughs> I yeah. record because these are all new to me. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, it's a good thing you didn't read them before because then you would have had too many apps, which we're going to get to in just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but Vux, my pick of the week, uh, a few weeks ago, the new service where they uh, have very creative ways of it's a video along with a book read by somebody great, but it has the words and it really helps stimulate reading for our young readers. It's kind of like a little movie, huh? Yes. They're doing uh, free for a month right now and a year for teachers. So I think they've extended that. Very cool. Uh, so follow up on our apps, Dave. I don't know <laughs> with all the wildness going on in our world if you're able to clean up, but I did go back and do some research in our past shows via notnerd.com. Mm-hmm. So back on 2000, in 2017, so three years ago, we did this. And uh, April 12th, you chimed in. You had 228 apps, and I had 416. Mm -hmm. Then about 11 months later, on March 7th, 2018, this was the big one. And I think we skipped last year because that 2018 was so dramatic. Dave, you were all the way up to 480, and I was at 491, and that's when we decided things had gotten a little too drastic, so we did our <laughs> 119 app challenge, Yeah, we were able to get down to 127, and I got down to 162, so then about two years later, we had uh, gotten back up, I'll remind people that I was at 366, and you had 491 last week, so let's yeah. just begin, do you are you... Are you higher than you were last week or have you been able to drop down? <laughs> I have been able to drop down, but I'm going to need another week, I think, because yeah. I did delete a bunch, but I added a few as well. And so you're going to have to do the math for me, but I'm currently at 484. So that's a whopping seven that you dropped. <laughs> but I think I deleted more, but I added a couple and I can't give yeah. you those detailed statistics. So I'm going to need maybe another week, but I did, I, I took about an hour and I went through and you know what happens. You get going along and you're like, <laughs> oh, I remember that app. And then you start playing it or uh, doing, taking photos. And then 
uh, next thing you know, you wake up the next morning and you're like, uh, I forgot what I was supposed to be doing. Yes, yes. I am down to 338. So I was able to uh, download or remove 28 from my Mm. phone in a pretty short amount of time. But we did go uh, two years ago when we did it, we did take two weeks to try to get down to the 119. Neither of us quite made it down there. Um, But one of the other interesting things I would like to know from listener Todd, who you can find at RIP VHS on YouTube, his great YouTube videos. Um, But he, at that time on Facebook, let us know that he had 32 apps on his phone. (laughs) Now he upgraded this past fall. So I'm wondering if possibly... Hopefully, Wait. Todd has expanded his apps up past 32, I believe it was. How did he have 32 apps on a flip phone? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yes, on a tinfoil hat. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so that's a, that's a little follow-up on that. Oh, man. those are, The apps are hard to get rid of. There's some that I have not used in forever, but I'm like, oh, I just... I. I like having this on my phone just in case I might need it sometime in the next millennium. You never know when there's going to be a a virus outbreak or something. You might need those apps. This is true. You know what else you might need? Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. So I was uh, visiting with my good friend and yours, uh, Elliot, the man down under. Yeah. The man from the land down under, I should say. And we were having a nice chat via iMessage, and then we switched over to telephone. <laughs> Bonus pro tip, make sure you use uh, FaceTime audio instead of calling because uh, it can cause some yes. issues as far as international roaming and charges Ooh, yeah. and all that stuff. So not an issue, but could have been, could have been an issue. Could have been several hundred dollars. So anyway, that's the pro tip for international calling because many of you may be calling people you haven't talked to in a long time who are overseas. Yes. Uh, FaceTime audio is the way to go. But that's not what we're going to discuss today. Today, um, we're going to talk about sending animated GIF, YIF, GIFs through mm-hmm. your iMessage protocol through your iOS device, such as your iPhone or your iPad. Now, you and I all day long make assumptions about what people know and what people do not know. And so when I'm chatting with Elliot, I'm just sending some some LOL type animated GIFs back and forth. And I was like, oh, hang on a minute. How do you normally send like an animated GIF? We got in a discussion that I was making the assumption that he knew how to use the built-in image search mm-hmm. in iMessage. It's one of those little apps that Apple stuck in there a yes. couple years ago, along with like, what are those memojis and all these oh, yeah. fancy all things. All the sticker things. All this crazy stuff. And app and all that yeah. stuff. In the in the where the support can talk to you through iMessage and all these weird things, but I think there are probably others out there who don't know how easy it is through iMessage to send an animated GIF at any point in your conversation. So this is going to require an iPhone or an iPad running iMessage. So go on into your iMessage app, and uh, I'll just create a new message, for instance, and you don't need to fill it out to anybody, but down. Above your keyboard, you're going to see a row of icons, and it's usually your photos icon is in the very left, followed by the app store, and then the order kind of goes out of control at that point. And you can reorder these things, by the way. But on mine, if I scroll uh, that bar back and forth, the icons get larger, and there are more options off to the right. And one of those is a red icon with a magnifying glass in it, and it is the image search. This is a quick little, I guess, probably a plug into the Safari web browser. And you can type any name of any images that you want. Uh, for example, happy birthday is one of the examples that they give. And when I tap that, my screen is filled with animated GIFs of, uh, here's w- Will Ferrell, doing something weird. There's like usually Rihanna or Kanye or somebody doing something with, with a happy birthday. It's like a little animated meme and you just tap it. It pops it into your message and then you hit send and it goes off to the other person. It couldn't be simpler. Now what's so great about this is you can be talking about any type of topic in the world and you're like, words cannot describe what I want to send here. So you just go to the little image search, type in what you think, send the animated GIF, 
And the image is worth a thousand words. True. And it's a moving image. So it's a thousand times 20 frames or whatever. Yeah. How many so, frames are in the thing? It's probably a hundred or so. Yeah. No, so that's, anyway. a, that's a great little tip. Brent livens up the, uh, the messaging. Right. Nice. Well, let's move on to our takes of the week. As I mentioned earlier, there was actually some tech news. Just as Apple is closing down all their retail stores, they decided this week to announce some new products. And uh, Dave, we haven't gotten even much chance to talk about these new items. But Okay. They announced a new iPad Pro with a new crazy magic keyboard, a new MacBook Air, and an updated Mac Mini. Now, the Mac Mini, they just kind of, it's the same processor with a little more storage. That Mm -hmm. one's not too interesting unless you're shopping for Mac Mini. You'll get a little more for your money. The MacBook Air... Uh, They made some improvements with the revised keyboard, uh, similar to my 16-inch MacBook Pro, Mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting because that still leaves the 13-inch MacBook Pro that is on the old, which there's rumors there's a Do not buy. (laughs) Yes, do not buy the 13-inch MacBook Pro right now because there should be a new one any moment, but most interesting Uh, Not even necessarily the new iPad Pro, which has some pretty amazing specs, but this new Magic Keyboard. Dave, have you gotten a chance to check this out? Obviously, go to the store and see it, but they have plenty of videos and the like. I would love to check it out in person, but I cannot, as you mentioned. But I have taken a lot of time to research it online and watch some videos, et cetera, et cetera. And the one thing that you really need to remember is that the new iPad Pro aesthetically looks identical to last year's iPad Pro, but it's got a much more complicated processor and a new camera array on the back, which includes, and I kid you not, a LiDAR sensor. This is a laser type device that shoots out laser light, maps the room, sends it back. They call it a time of flight sensor. Uh, The speed in which the particles come back is how they can determine the distance that they traveled. It's amazing. It's crazy. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. So it's that fine-tuned. Anyway, this thing is now on your iPad and you can do all kinds of crazy augmented reality type stuff with it. But it doesn't stop there. It looks the same practically. It's got some new processors and like I said, that new sensor. But what's really crazy is the new keyboard that they came out with, their new Magic Keyboard. And I'm really looking forward to checking that out. They've kind of done some funky stuff with the main hinge. They've built into USB type C charging port there. And through the rest of the case that snaps into the back of your iPad, they have those three pins on the back. That's how they connect to the power to to charge your device. Um, But they've also got another flexi hinge at the top of that piece, which makes your iPad appear to be floating over the keyboard, which is kind of cool. And you can infinitely adjust the angle of that tilt so that it's never going to be too flat or too straight up. You can put it right where you want it, which was a complaint that a lot of people had on the old one where it's, it's set up very vertical and you're like, I want to tilt it down a little bit. So this, I'm really looking forward to it. Now remind me, I don't have the cost in front of me, but I think the magic keyboard for the 11 inch size iPad comes in at $299 and the one for the larger iPad comes in at $399. You can buy an iPad cheaper than that case. Yes, I think it's two ninety nine and three forty nine for the larger one. Okay, I might have missed it in all that stuff that you were just throwing at us. But that the crazy thing about this also is that it has a trackpad. Oh, yeah. I the completely keyboard, forgot minor detail. There's I a trackpad on there. Which, uh, they're not coming out till May. This new keyboard, but as of the time you're listening to this on Tuesday, March twenty fourth, they are releasing. Uh, iOS 13.4 or iPad OS 13.4 more specifically, which will include full mouse trackpad support for the uh, for even the current iPads. Now they added in the assess- accessibility version where it was kind of supported, but now it's, they're just opening wide open full support for mouse and trackpads for your iPad, which is uh, pretty crazy. Come a long way. 
Yeah, I I did. I buried the lead on that. I was so enamored with the aesthetics of this keyboard case that I forgot completely about the trackpad. So I will say this, that whenever I spend any of my own personal money and maybe my work money, this will be my next laptop style computer. I don't plan on buying another MacBook. Um, I'll, I'll stick with my desktop computers, my iMacs that I have in various places. But for something portable, I really like the iPad. I like that I can rip off everything and I just have a bare tablet that I can sit on my lap and play games on, or I can lay it on the floor and and watch a movie, or I can put it in this case and go into full-on work mode. But the trackpad's really going to help me because most often I will use uh, VPN technology to go into my work computer from home using my iPad, and I'm using the screen of the iPad as kind of a virtual trackpad. How much better would it be if I could have an actual trackpad yeah. to move the cursor around? It just makes sense. It does. You love your iPad, and this is really taking it to the next level. Uh, Logitech is also coming out with another trackpad keyboard uh, for some of the older models of the iPad, not necessarily the new iPad Pro. This looks pretty cool. I mean, this is a big step. Uh, it's kind of, I think it starts at $799, but yeah, once you add in the keyboard, it adds up and the base level of the new MacBook Air, they actually dropped the price mm-hmm. by $100 to $999, which is great. That is um, great. But now you kind of have these two devices that uh, really just comes down to whether you need or like Mac OS versus iPad OS overall. So, right. Apple with some big news and uh, also some big news you're going to be real excited about, Dave, that Facebook has released for most users their new desktop interface with dark mode. Dave, are you trying this out? Have you been no. spending a lot of time on Facebook on your desktop? What is this service you're talking about? <laughs> yes. Twitter? No. Yeah. No, I have not been really up to speed on any of the face book stuff. So now is this just a website or is this the app that you run on various things? So this is the website. So I logged in at some point over the last week and it gave me the option saying, Hey, would you like to try out this new mode? So I said, sure. So it completely is dark mode. It's got a new interface. The current or the old Facebook interface is a little bit dated. It's just kind of, you know, angular and everything. So this one, it really, I like it. It takes a little getting used to a couple things have moved around, but it seems to work very well. So if you use Facebook on a computer and it pops up with that, give it a try. See if you like it. I like the dark mode. Uh, just makes it a little less bright in my eyes. Uh, well, as I report live to you now on a real time follow up, my website is the old gray white style with the blue bar at the top and there's no prompt anywhere to upgrade. They probably said, Hey, if you're a power user, let's yes. try that out. So I might be getting it a couple years from now. I think. <laughs> yes. You might have to log in more than once every six months on your computer to get that option. Possibly. I don't want to scare you too much. Uh, one more piece of Facebook news. This one might actually interest you, Dave. Facebook mm-hmm. has developed <laughs> super precise public timekeeping service for the internet. And what is the purpose of this? Well, there are many services and different things that rely on having accurate time. And uh, current systems usually run around 10 milliseconds of uh, conformity, I guess you would say. But don't we have... NIST servers in Washington or wherever to, or in the middle of a mountain in Colorado Springs that deal with these type of things? Why do we need Facebook to get involved? Because Facebook's figured out a way to do it much faster. So NIST has 10 milliseconds. They've got it to 100 microseconds. So they have created this thing and obviously it was something important to them um, <laughs> I guess. in their lab and they're going to start pushing that out so you can configure with it if you go to time.facebook.com which I'm trying to load now and it's seeming to not want to load so maybe my time's going to be off but yeah probably will not affect any of us but uh, Facebook is making more accurate time and as you and Todd are probably thinking so they can more easily steal our information and give well, it that's, to the wrong people. I don't think there's even a question. That's exactly what they're going to do with it. Yes. 
Uh, one other note, and we've seen this across many services, but I saw this article, Microsoft Teams, which is their service really for businesses to work well together for communication and organizing thing. It had a 40% surge in usage over the last uh, week or two as everybody's been working from home. I yeah, was I wonder what the my, catalyst could be for that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, it, and people seem to be liking it. I was talking to my neighbor his business. They're trying to figure it out. They've never used it before. So they're like, yeah, I think we're going to use this Microsoft Teams thing. Um, but yeah, people are scrambling to find ways to work better remotely. And Sony had a big announcement this week too. They released the specs of the PlayStation 5. Yeah, I heard a couple of people talking about this and you know, they've got the Xbox One X series X, uh, whatever it is, the new one, the new Xbox that's coming out specs. And then they've got the PlayStation specs and they put them all in a list and you can look, well, this one's got more Ram, but that one's got a faster processor, but this one's got a faster bus and this one's got a faster Bluetooth and whatever. Uh, This one's got a faster SSD. I think it all boils down to what platform do you like to play games on? Yeah. Or maybe it boils down to, How do you like the controller feel in your hand? Do you like the Xbox controller or the PlayStation controller? Because outside of a few exclusive games, the experience is really about the same. I don't don't notice a lot of a difference, but I'm usually one or two generations back when it comes to new consoles, the Switch being the exception, even though it came out like a year and a half ago, or actually over two years ago now at this point. I'm not the best person to talk about brand new specs, but... It sounds like it's going to be a really fast machine and it's going to move a lot of gigaflops. Yes, yes. Uh, Teraflops even. (laughs) 10.28 teraflops compared to 1.8 teraflops on the PlayStation 4. But yeah, it's... How many um, flops do you need at the end of the day is what I asked. Yeah, I I don't really know. Again, I don't think that I'll probably ever buy any more gaming systems, but it sure does look like these... That they are making enough changes that it would be worth an update for somebody that does serious gaming on uh, these systems. They've moved over to from hard drives to SSD drives. and Which uh, I think it, you and I both agree that SSDs are a huge oh, advantage yeah. in computing. So that's probably one of the biggest things that they've done. Yes. It's gotten away from those old slow spinning hard drives. Yep. Yep. And it's got a, of course, a 4k UHD Blu-ray drive and all that stuff. So, uh, I don't know when that's coming out. I do know we have some gaming gamers out there. I don't know, Jared, if you'll be purchasing one of these or any of our other listeners and, uh, you can always let us know your thoughts on that stuff. Mm -hmm. And due to the current, uh, climate of our world, I am going to give us a reprieve from the security and privacy Mm, story. Of the week, and uh, because of that, we won't need a bonus odd take of the week to cleanse our palate. But if you do, if you guys ever stumble across any bonus odd takes, shoot them over to us. We'd love to uh, see what you're finding out there on the internet. There's so many odd, quirky websites and services and apps out there that if you ever find anything, uh, send it on over. I like to describe it as the weird and wonderful world wide web. Yes, yes. If there's anything out there. You know what else is weird and wonderful? Our picks of the week. week. Now, that's not a nice thing to say about my pick of the week this week. Now, I will remind our listeners that way back in February of 2017, in episode 60 titled Chalupas, Chips, and Comics. (laughs) Is that chips? I misspelled whatever word that was supposed to be. Uh, That Nate uh, had a pick of the week that was similar to this. And then he talked about it again Later in episode 104 for our gadget gift guide of 2017. Wow. So later that year. But my pick of the week, you guys probably remember what it is yeah. from those two, Obviously. two things back in 2017. But it is a Dymo label maker. And more specifically, label maker or label manager 280 rechargeable portable label maker. You probably clicked the link already that I provided, Nate. No, I have not. I oh, have not. I've well, controlled maybe myself. Okay, control yourself because I'm going to have you guess the price of this guy. Uh, but Ooh. before you do, I'm showing him via video what it looks like. Uh, this is the 
uh, rechargeable portable label maker, easy to use, one touch smart keys, QWERTY keyboard, PC and Mac connectivity for home and office organization. You heard that right. It's got a USB printer port at the top that you can connect to your computer and you can download software to do crazy labels like with pictures or uh, Whoa, wow. specifically for me being an IT guy, uh, barcodes. You can have it print barcodes. There's only a few dollars more to get this style, maybe yeah. six or eight dollars more. So I went ahead and got it. I don't have an immediate need to use a barcode, but I may in the future. So I think it's a great tool and it's pretty chonky. It's not one of your small handhelds, yeah. but uh, you can use different style of labels. You can do black and white, white on black. You can do black on like seven different colors you can choose oh, wow. from. Um, and it's got that keyboard. So things are easy to type in, just like typing on a computer. Yes. And one thing that my old Dymos couldn't do that this one can is you can do multiple lines. Oh. So you can have a tiny, like three lines of tiny text or one giant yeah. line of text. Uh, you can print vertical and sideways, upside down, backwards, whatever. It's pretty cool. Nice. So, what would you pay for such a monstrosity? Oh, and it's rechargeable too. So, shoosh. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to remember because it it does look like the new and much improved version of the one that I have, and I'm trying to remember back what I paid for that. But I'm going to guess that that was thirty four ninety nine. <laughs> that is the exact price. Are is you it? sure you didn't? Look? I did not. I did not click it. I was thinking that mine was like twenty or twenty. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's got a lot more features. So, dang, ding, you ding, win. Ding. Finally, I <sighs> now I have to buy you one because you got the price exactly <laughs> right. Yes. No. Uh, well, my pick of the week, again, great for uh, podcast medium, Dave. I'm going to try to show this to you and hopefully it doesn't break the internet. Uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what in the what? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to, how did, how did you get the computer monitor on your head so quickly? Yes. Is it heavy? <laughs> so I am using a program and I thought we had maybe talked about it some somewhere before, but I didn't find it in our previous notes. There's an application and with everybody using Zoom and other streaming video services to communicate right now, there's an app from our friends at Snap who make Snapchat called Snap Camera. <laughs> and they have uh, hundreds and hundreds of these little, much like Snapchat where you can put things on your head. Uh, you can do these different things. I'm going to try another one here for you <laughs> a very uh timely one of a bunch of roll of t rolls of toilet paper on my head well i have to describe to the audience what i'm seeing so uh, we're in a zoom meeting so you're in one picture frame and i'm in the other and your face turned into a computer monitor with two little uh graphics of an eye and a, and a mouth well squares really and it was tracking perfectly with your head so it looked like you had it's like you're out of the saga uh comic book for all of you comic book nerds out there. Mm, yes. um, one of these computer TV guys. Um, but now you've got rolls of toilet paper and your head kind of might like Medusa would have snakes. Yeah. And um, you better look out or someone's going to attack you to get that toilet paper. And now I don't even know what I've I'm got seeing. floating burritos behind me. So snap camera might be a little extreme. You can go download it for free and try out things, but I'm going to turn off the nap camera and switch back to my regular camera. So I have a question. How does this put graphics between you and our Zoom meeting? Uh, it, it, so you actually, you have the application open on your computer. And then within Zoom, when you go to select your camera, it has my FaceTime HD camera built in. And it also has uh, the snap camera. So it looks at that it acts as an intermediary as another camera. Now, another thing I'm going to do very quickly here, which might be a little more practical. Some people don't keep their rooms very clean. What? Uh, you might not want to show what's in the background of your video for a business meeting. So within Zoom, there is a way to do virtual background. So I have a beautiful picture I took of downtown Portland. Do you know how much time I spent getting my garage I put up a big curtain. I got a world map back there and I got the lighting going so that people don't see the junk in my garage. Yeah. And I could have just done it like this. Now it's cutting your head off kind of weird. Uh, well, and the problem is it 
completely cuts off my mustache. Uh, <laughs> That's a sin. Uh, it's not perfect, but in a pinch, uh, you could do a you could get a green screen. They're setting, but Zoom has a lot of this built in for the background. But then the snap camera is a great way to take it to the crazy level if that is appropriate for whatever you're doing via video. Well, I never knew about any of these things. So this is all news to me. This is really, really cool. Very nice. Well, our Amazon purchase of the week. Uh, a lot of people are shopping on Amazon, even though uh, we didn't mention it in the news, but they are delaying a lot of shipments and they're not even accepting new inventory from a lot of non-essential products mm-hmm. uh, so that they can focus on getting people what they need. But we love it when you guys shop on Amazon. Go to amazon.notner.com when you need something. It gives us a little kickback and it doesn't cost you anything. So it's a great way to help out the show. And I love of looking at those anonymous reports to see what you guys are buying. And this one might have been you, Dave. Okay. It's the Ace Car Baby Yoda merchandise stickers, 50 pieces, the Mandalorian Star Wars decal for laptop, hydro flask, water ball, car cup, computer, guitar, skateboard, luggage, bike bumper, kid gift, Baby Yoda, 50 pieces. You would be right, my friend, but it wasn't for me. I have ah. to explain this. Now, nobody in my family listens to my to this show. They just don't yeah. care. Uh, they, I, don't, I don't even know if they know I do it, even <laughs> though I tell them at every opportunity and put it on their phones or whatever. Yes. But my daughter's 18th birthday is coming up. So oh, wow. if there are her, any of her friends are listening, don't tell her this. But we have purchased 18 individual items to give to her oh, on her cool. birthday so she can unwrap them. And one of them was this sticker pack of Baby Yoda Mandalorian uh, stuff. So I thought it'd be really cool. You could put on water bottles, like you said, yeah. computers, whatever. It's pretty neat. And it was rather inexpensive. Everybody loves some Baby Yoda. So Dave, mm-hmm. what did you pay for these <laughs> stickers? Do you remember? Here's the. You're going to be further off than you ever have been on anything. I was just clicking stuff and putting the cart and hitting buy. Uh, or I think they were like around six or eight bucks. For those six, things, six ninety five, right in the middle. Yeah, so, yeah. If you need some Baby Yoda stickers, my daughter loves stickers. So, if your daughter ends up with any extras, uh, we will help her out with those. She has a wall of stickers. I will definitely remember that, and we'll take peel off a not peel off. We will move yes. out a few and <laughs> yes. give them to her. Sam awesome. might end up with some as well. Yes. uh, Share the wealth. Well, I think with that, we are going to wrap up this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully it brought a little joy and knowledge to your day. Now stay home and tech better. It hailed here. Did it hail at your place? Uh, A little bit. I barely heard it. Kind of dumped here. And then it was over in a flash. You'll see my very hilarious tweet later on, I'm sure. Woo-hoo. Well, I'll just uh, do it the way I do it.